Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your sixth MongoDB for beginners tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how we can create and save some data to MongoDB. Okay then, so now we know how to run our tests in Mocha, we can do something a bit more useful than test that two numbers add up to five. We can start to test different things with our MongoDB connections such as saving data to our database. So the first thing I want to do is rename this demo test file. So I'll come to rename down here and we'll call this instead saving underscore test. So we're going to test our saving data to the database in this file. So let's get rid of that. We're going to give it a different string for describe and we'll say saving records. And then also in the it block, I want to rename it to saves a record to the database. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of that thing there. We're not going to assert that 2 plus 3 equals 5 anymore. This time what we want to do is create a new Mario character. Remember, we created a Mario character model a couple of lessons back it's in this file. And we did that with Mongoose. So we created a Mario character schema and a Mario character model right here. So we're going to create a new Mario character using that model. And we're going to save that record to the database. So how do we create a new Mario character first of all? Well, if you remember, we exported this Mario character model right here. So we have access to this model within other files when we require this file. So let's first of all require this file in our test file so that we can use it. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say const Mario car equals require and then what I want to do is give a path to this file right here that we're getting this from. So it's in this models folder right here. We're currently in the test folder. So we need to go up a directory first of all. So that's double dot forward slash. Then we want to go inside the models folder. Then we want the Mario car file like that. We don't need to pop JS on. Uh, Node already knows to uh, look for a JavaScript file. So now we can use this in this file. So how do we create a new Mario character? All we need to do is first of all say var car, we'll call this. This is just the name of a, uh, a variable to store the Mario character in. I'm going to set that equal to a new Mario car like so. Okay. And then what we need to do is pass in an object into this constructor. So inside we want to specify what the name of this character is and what the weight is. We don't have to give both. We can just give one if we want. Remember, in this file right here, we created the schema. So these are the properties that the Mario character model is expected. So we can give it one of these or none of them or whatever. But if we give it a name, it has to be a string. If we give it a weight, it has to be a number. Let's just give it a name for now. So we'll say name. And we're going to call this dude Mario, the main character. And that is our new character right there. So that's a new record, if you like. Now, at the minute, we've only created this locally. It's just sitting around here doing nothing. We've used Mongoose to create it, but it's not in our database yet. OK, so what we need to do is then save this character to the database, this record. So when we create this new instance of this Mario character model, when we create this, Mongoose gives us a lot of methods to use that we can work with to interact with the database and do something with this model. So, for example, we could save this instance of the model this new character to the database using the save method. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to say car, which is this variable right here. We stored the instance in dot save. OK, so Mongoose gives us that method. It allows us to just get that character, that record and save it directly to the database. And because we've already made a connection to the database in our connection .js file right here, we connected to the database right there. Now, because we've already done that, Mongoose knows where to go. It knows which database to go into and it goes into that and it saves this in the Mario characters collection. Remember, we said what collection this belongs to right here. So this is going to be our collection name within that database. So it's all pretty clever and it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So this, my friends, is going to grab that character and it's going to save it to the database. But what we want to do then is test this. We want to make sure that this has worked correctly. Now, we can't just come under here and say assert that it's been saved. And the reason we can't do that is because this thing right here, this save function is an asynchronous request. 
And by that I mean it starts as soon as the code hits here, it starts that process of saving it. But then that save process might take one second, up to two seconds, however long it might take, um, it's not instantaneous. So what will happen is the code will carry on running and it will try to assert something, whether it's saved to the database, before it's actually finished. We don't want that. We want to wait for the process to finish and then assert that it's been done correctly. So because Mongoose knows that this right here is an asynchronous request, it implements the promise interface for us. And a promise basically means that we can tack on the dot, uh, the dot then method, which says, OK, well, I want you to wait for this thing to complete first. Then we're going to fire off a function. And that function is going to be placed in here. So this waits for this save action to be complete. Then it fires this function. So in here, we can assert that this has successfully been saved. But how the hell do we do that? It's not just as simple as saying 2 plus 3 equals 5 anymore. How do we know that it's saved correctly to the database? Well, one cool feature of Mongoose is that it gives us the dot is new property. So I could say something like this. Assert, and I'll say car dot is new. And this is going to either return true or false. It returns true when we've created this character locally, but we've not yet returned it to the database or saved it to the database rather. So that's when it's true. So basically saying, yes, it's new. It returns false when the character has been created and after it's been saved to the database to say, actually, it's no longer new. We've saved it now to the database. So then we can use this property to test whether it's been saved to the database. So we want this basically to equal false because that means that it's not new and that it's been saved to the database. Make sense? So if I save this now, it's not going to work because there's one more thing we need to do. Like I said a minute ago, this right here is an asynchronous request, right? And Mocha needs to know when we've completed the test and it doesn't automatically know when it's been saved. So we need to explicitly say when it's complete. And to do that, we need to pass in a done parameter right there. OK, Mocha gives us that. And then what we can do is use that done parameter down here after the test is complete. So after we've made the assertion, we can say, OK, now this is done. Fire that done function. We're telling Mocha now that our test is done and you can move on to the next test, which might be down here somewhere like this. Next test. Yeah. So that's all there is to it. Quickly again, what we've done is we've got this it block now, which is saying we're saving a record to the database. Then what we're doing is creating this new instance of a Mario character using the Mario car model. We created that a couple of lessons ago. We passed it a name property. Then what we did is we said car dot save. This method is provided to us by Mongoose that goes out, saves this to the database because this is asynchronous. We returned a promise. And we can say dot then. So we're waiting for this save function to finish. And when it has, it fires this next function, which asserts that character is new is equal to false, meaning that this is no longer new. It's now being saved to the database. And that's what we want. We want it to be saved to the database. And then what we're doing is we're saying this test is now done. And we can do that because we passed the done parameter in there. So let's save this now and just check it out. I'm going to open up this. And I'm going to run npm run test. And hopefully this is all going to work. Sweet. So that passes and all is good. However, I want to show you one thing right here. You see this deprecation warning. It says mpromise mongoose's default promise library is deprecated. Plug in your own promise library instead. So this thing right here that we used, this dot then method, this is being based on Mongoose's default promise library. Remember, we're being returned a promise here. And it's saying that for whatever reason, this is now deprecated. I think it's so that the developer has a bit more flexibility in what promise library he or she wants to use, because there's quite a lot of them out there, Bluebird, Q, etc. What I'm going to do is use ES6's default promise library, and I'm going to show you how we can implement that in the very next tutorial. So I'll see you guys then.